Well, hello everybody. This is Chrissy from Crutchett's Chirps Farm and with all my roosters making all sorts of noise. Um, I just thought I'd give you a show if you ever want to know why um, these Gatornix quail and in this case here's some Celeron quail in the video grow so quickly. Here's the reason. Um, this is their feed dish and these are my um, chicks that are about two and a half weeks old now. The ones that um, you probably all recall hatched um, recently, two and a half weeks ago. And look at them eating. They're surrounding their um, dish and there's so many of them, they don't even fit around the dish, but they're all trying to squeeze in there. I'm not sure how easy you can see this, but I'll try to get a close up. They're inside their cage. Let's see if it'll, there we go. If you can see, put it right there on top of the wire. That is a full circle of baby quail coming on their feeder. Look at that. They just don't stop eating. They eat and drink all day long. And right now in this heat, um, because I have these one and two gallon waters, I have to feed, fill, refill their waters like once and twice a day um, because they also go through water like crazy. And because as most of you know, I'm not in a permanent living situation right now. Um, I can't really set up a drip line for watering or anything. I will do that once I find a permanent place to live, but it's just insane. All these guys do all day long is eat and drink, but um, they don't, you would think that they go through a lot of feed and it would be expensive to raise them, but their feed is not expensive. And for the amount of quail that's here, um, that's actually not a lot of feed. So they're not expensive to raise, but I'm just pointing out that this is why they grow so quickly because they just eat, eat, eat. But you can see that is all of the quail surrounding their feeder. And these are surrounding their water dish which I think I'm just gonna go ahead and refill because I thought I'd be okay. But at the rate they're going right now, if I walk away and go in the house, it's gonna be empty in the next 10, 15 minutes because it doesn't have a whole lot of water in there and it looks like they're pretty thirsty. A close up of them in their water there. These little quail sure did turn out pretty. This new batch. I got a couple of, um, or even I like this color right here, that little hen. Um, I got two or three different colors. You can see, let me see if I can get this on top of this one. Some of them are getting some white feathering in. So they're not adults yet. I don't know exactly what color they'll turn out to be. We'll see when they're completely grown what they look like. But um, they are going to be pretty regardless of what their actual coloring is when they're adults. And we'll just keep playing around with their color um, coloring. And these two like to come visit the quail all the time and follow mama everywhere are just right here in the middle of it yes you are hi what are you doing what are you doing buddy huh? these ended up being a rooster and a hen my two little white chicks you can see his streamers his beautiful streamers huh yes i'm talking about you they like me to pick them up all the time and you can see she doesn't have those long streamers. She's just a little short, little shorty pants with her pretty little fluffy head and 
He's short and tiny little bantam too, but he's starting to get his long tail feathers and his long pretty streamers. But right now we're talking about the quail, you guys. Yeah, there they are, eating, eating, eating. about a dozen quail eggs a day now so they may eat a lot but they're also giving me a lot back so um, I could be hatching a lot of babies um, right now to either raise for more egg production which I do eat I make pickled quail eggs I make little boiled quail eggs to eat I fry eggs um, I give them away, I sell hatching eggs, um, or um, I could also be hatching them to put more um, quail in the freezer for eating. But again, um, I've been kind of deciding if I should put more hatching on hold or continue hatching because, um, again, because of my living situation, I have over 60 quail right now, so um, I'm getting some, a bunch of roosters put into a grow out pen right now, or some that'll be processed and put into the freezer, and after I'm done with that, we'll see how many we have left how many are hens and roosters for breeding for eggs. And then we'll make a decision on whether we're going to hatch anymore or not. And of course we've got these here, these celeron that'll be my blue egg um, quail. And those I'm going to keep as um, just solely for egg laying. Those will be my ornamental birds. And for the pretty eggs for um, those will be for eating eggs and hatching eggs and for selling, selling the birds and their eggs. That'll be there for food. I've got, as you can see, there's a few um, or a handful of the Catornix quail in there also. That's what you're looking at right there, that little um, light colored one. Those are the fawn colors. And there's a couple of what they call the wild quail, the brown one. They aren't wild, that's just what they call them, other coloring. That right there is a celeron that just got underneath the camera right now. That's one of the quail that's got the white feathering coming in. It looks like they're, they're eating calm down a little bit there. Here's that other adult quail over here. They're a little set up. Got all kinds of them now too. These are all the Katornix. Um, these are the last batch of chicks that I put in. Um, they're all adults now, starting to lay eggs. And we've got a bunch of roosters in there. Like I said, we'll be picking and choosing which ones are gonna be our grow outs out of, that, out of them. Um, like this guy over here got separated. He's incredibly aggressive. He was um, tearing other birds' um, feathers out, scalping them, poking eyes out. So if anybody feels bad about birds getting processed, you can see why they get pulled out. There's reasons for it. And um, then they just get processed for eating. That's what they're for anyway, but um, I do it selectively. I don't want to breed aggressive aggression into my birds. So um, I knew that I had one. I'll give you guys a, so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see what that poor bird looks like. Um, that's from aggressive birds. 
and we do not need to breed that into our birds and we do not need to be, these poor birds to be suffering. See what that one looks like. We don't need that happening. And if you look in this cage over here, these birds don't look like that. They're all very healthy looking. None of them have been pecked over like that. That's because the rooster I have in with these hens, and there's a couple of other roosters in here too, so it's not fighting. It was an aggressive rooster. Um, you don't see them all pecked over like that. So that's what I do is I pick through my quail and keep the ones that aren't aggressive and try to breed in the docile quail. Hi, <laughs> you following me around there? Do you think I have food or water? You've got food and water in there, buddy. Yeah. Those are two um, very young roosters right there. Hi right there. See, they're real friendly when they're, um, when you keep the docile birds and just keep breeding that into them. And then you can keep one rooster for every five hens and just keep raising them for breeding. You think I got food? Okay, so that's our little setup and what's going on with them. We got a bunch of eggs in here to collect. They just lay them all over the place. There's one over there. I'll zoom it in. It's over there on the ground. I saw some eggs over here. They just kind of lay them. There's one over there. They lay them all over the place, just scattered. Okay, so I'll check in with you guys later with another update on some of the animals, whatever we can think of next. So we will be talking to you later.